uncovers a national funeral gem and introduces our chamber segment by answering the question of what is a chamber? What's up Tejas? I'm here today outside the National Funeral Museum in Harris County, Texas. And today is National Funeral Director and Mortician Day. Let's go check it out. Got a mask up. This is hard holder. How cute. What's up, Tejas? I don't know about you, but I've been dying to come here. Dying. Here's a bracelet to keep the evil eye away. I really like this. It's cute. I know. I like the blue. How much are these things? Can I get one? Charm bracelet, $1.99. Is that this one? What? That's a lie. These are some great patterns. The museum entrance, one, and then the gift shop, three, okay, three, and then we're in here, so okay. 10 and 11. 11, historical hearses. Come on, let's go check out the historical hearses. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. A 1900s railroad baggage cart. This one's like fancy. You can go look at the back and check it out. The basket case. I know this is gonna sound weird, but do you think that you can get inside a casket? That would be kind of weird, right? Make sure it fits. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. Actually, I was reading an article one time and it was talking about how people are having to make larger, extra large caskets. Oh, wow. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, though. Who fits in this one? <laughs> like, look at this. Who fits in this? They have to like break people's bones to put them in or something. 1800s coffin. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. Oh, this makes me sad. Because it's a tiny little casket. There's another basket case over here. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about one of the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny, huh? Like, come on. Come on, come on. A crematory. Ooh. We both said, ooh, at the same time. And they have these really cool selfie spots too. So if you want to take a selfie with, you know, this cool carriage, let me put my mat down because it's kind of awkward. Hold on. They are good. Yeah, look how bright and pretty. It reminds me of Coco. <laughs> Francis's favorite movie. <laughs> Look, Abuelita's right here. 
And there's the ofrenda. So this year, I think that I'm gonna make my own um, altar for Day of the Dead. So I never did that like growing up, but I think I'm gonna do that this year. Purse, okay. So what is all of this? What is all of this? This is, these are coffins. Yes. Oh, wow. Which coffin would you want to be in? Let me see. I think I would want this car since I couldn't have it in life. Like I would be okay with having it in death. <laughs> yeah. These cars are so old and cool. I think it's the German one. This says German. Germany. Where's 9 11? 9 11. Here's a small tribute to the people that have fallen in 9-11. So, let's see. Oh, Look, there's an urn here that contains the ashes from Ground Zero. <laughs> I thought they said you couldn't take your money with you. I guess you can. <laughs> How about we just like run off with this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Oh my God, did you see this? Look. It's a ginormous casket. A casket for three from the 1930s. It says a couple small child died. And so, they were going to uh, have a murder-suicide couple so that they could be buried with their child. Wow. Let's see. Oh, look, presidential seal right here. Let me take another selfie. Yeah, with Abe Lincoln. Like also, oh, hold on. Let me take my selfie and then let me talk about this. So this museum is the only one in the country, the only one. So if you want to check out a museum that's super unique, you need to come visit. Recently, Francis Castaneda Dice spoke with Representative Christina Morales, who is the director of Morales Funeral Home in Houston. So let's hear a few words from that interview. Good morning, everybody. This is Francis Castaneda Dice, president of the Houston East End Chamber of Commerce, and it's an honor to welcome you to our Feel Good Friday. Uh, this is our first one for 2021, and we're so honored to start off this year with our state representative, uh, Christina Morales of District 145, and it's neighboring uh, to, to where I live. It's just so hard to believe that there's a couple of streets that, that divide uh, us between each other. So welcome, State Representative Morales. How are you today? I'm great, Francis. Thank you so much for thinking of me and bringing me um, uh, to be a part of your Feel Good Friday. I so enjoyed the last time I was here. It was so fun. It is. Another great question that's here is, is 
Uh, you're a very successful business uh, owner of the Morales Funeral Home, and I know it's a family-owned business, and you've uh, taken it to a higher level and so well-respected, and you, you and your foundation give back to the community. But how did you make the jump from the funeral business to politics? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, you know, <laughs> this job takes somebody who has um, the resources to do to, to be able to take the time off from their uh, normal job their, and, you know, to be able to support themselves financially to advocate for their community. And uh, I'm just so fortunate and blessed that I was in a great position um, to do this. Um, um, I guess you could say I'm semi-retired. I have some great folks in, in uh, at the funeral home now who are just really managing everything. Our foundation doesn't require me to be there every day, so we're still able to help the community through our family foundation. But this job pays so little. <laughs> you know, uh, you can you can Google it, and and I think for the two year period, maybe we get forty thousand dollars. So, uh, you know, when you break it all down, that's what it comes out to. Visit the links below to connect with the chamber and see the rest of the interview with Francis and Representative Morales. Make sure that you come and visit this really unique museum and make sure that you follow them on social media. Thanks, bye. Y'all come back now, you're here. <laughs>For today's Chamber Moment, we're happy to have Francis Castaneda Dice, President of Houston East End Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for joining us today, Francis. Hi, thank you so much, Trina. <laughs> I'm happy to see you because I know, um, you know, we all work together at the Chamber and I feel like we are a pretty good team together. So. I agree. It's a beautiful team, a good trio here. <laughs> yes, that, and we even gave props to you, Francis, on our website that that's how Trina and I met, that we were working in the same office together. <laughs> so yeah. great uh, things have come out of that office, like uh, you too. I know. And so we're, we are, um, I asked you unofficially if the chamber, we would have you as our home chamber. And so officially, I'm going to ask you, can the Eastern Chamber, well, I guess as long as you're there, <laughs> and the Eastern Chamber be our home chamber. Absolutely. What's up, Tejas? <laughs> yes, I love the name, by the way. Oh, thank you. So um, I don't know about you, Trina, maybe you can see. Uh, did you know about chambers before you came into uh, working with Francis at the chamber? I didn't know what a chamber was before I met uh, Francis. So <laughs> what did, what was your experience? And then Francis, maybe you can tell us what for the people, especially um, the younger generation that didn't grow up in the era of automatically knowing chamber equal business. Um, but training you first, did you know anything about chamber life world? I honestly did not know what a chamber was until I started working there. Um, and then after working there, I realized what a great resource it is for businesses. So, um, you know, through working there, I learned a lot from Francis and the rest of the staff, and um, I've met a lot of really great people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that, uh, uh, Jenny, because a, a lot of people don't know uh, uh, what Chamber of Commerce do. Just like a lot of people don't know that we have a port of Houston in our backyard and that it's such a huge economic yeah. engine. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just give you some background. Uh, back in the late 80s, uh, a group of men and women business owners came together and created an organization called the East End Progress Association because they wanted to do business with one another. They wanted to bring more businesses to the East End and they wanted to maybe uh, do business with the port and other surrounding companies like that. So they created the East End Progress uh, Association. And then in 1991, it became officially the East End Chamber of Commerce. And Ann Olson uh, was our, the chamber's first president. Uh, she's now with the Buffalo Bayou Partnership. And so we still do collaboration projects together. Houston is such a huge city, but it's such a small one too. So we're all interconnected in that way. Um, but yeah, so, so their vision of, of connecting businesses to do business with one another is what we still do today. And uh, I don't know 
if you've heard that that's that some people say wow it's a chamber of commerce day and when the weather is really beautiful uh, uh i love that and it's, so it's like we make things beautiful you can say that <laughs> Um, but but there's the Greater Houston Partnership is like the big mother uh, chamber here in Houston. And then you've got a ton of other ones. Our East End one kind of uh, focuses on the area in our area in the East End. Uh, but we have members that are outside that want to do business with uh, the port uh, through us, that love the programming that we provide, that love the networking that we, we provide. So every chamber is a little bit different. But bottom line, they just want to help businesses grow. That's, um, I'm glad that you said that, Francis, because that was one of the things I was going to ask and what makes y'all different. Um, but so how long have you been a part of the chamber industry? Is this the first chamber that you've been involved with? Um, and how long have you been at the East End Chamber? I've been, I just celebrated 10 years with the chamber. Uh, it's the longest I ever been in my career with any organization. Um, so it's a landmark for me to be somewhere for 10 years. And uh, I live in the East End, I grew up in the East End, and it's such an honor to lead the East End Chamber of Commerce. Um, and so I, uh, when I was, my, my job before was with the Houston Rockets, and I was a board member of the chamber when they were trying to um, get the new uh, building or the new, new Toyota Center today in downtown. And so it was great to work with so many folks that I knew back in the day, and, and then for me to join it and continue working with, with companies, it's been, it's been phenomenal. Uh, before I started working with the chamber, I had absolutely no idea of uh, what opportunity was available uh, through the port. Uh, anything about the jobs, about the um, small business opportunity through the port. It was, um, you're right, so many Houstonians are like, really? Yeah, we have a port. It's somewhere over there. I think that's how our food comes in. Not really sure. <laughs> well, yeah. I think People are talking about that now because the shelves are looking a little bare but um uh so definitely it's been it's been eye-opening to work with the eastern chamber to see the connections but it's not just to the port right so mm -hmm. you have some um it's kind of funny i don't know if you know this trina but uh michael michael from valero is on the chamber board and he dubbed Frances La Reina de Isen. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was gonna have Frances wear her crown. I was gonna ask, does she have a tiara? <laughs> she does, but she doesn't wanna wear it. But the reason why he dubbed her that was because like she can, knows almost everybody in the East End and she can make some like amazing connections. Uh, for anybody looking to do business with the, in, within the East End, but it's not always 100% just in the East End because you have organizations like Metro. And who are some other organizations that you can connect? Um, yeah, the, the city of Houston. Um, and, you know, the University of Houston is right across the freeway from us, and they have a lot of, of procurement dollars that small businesses can bid for and, and get. Um, and then there's also the, the medical center, and there's just a lot of procurement dollars out there that our small businesses can tap into. Um, in addition to the city of Houston, the port has a ton of, of projects that small businesses can, can bid on. And HISD, uh, oh, so many businesses out there, we just try to make those connections. Yeah, and do it very well and successfully, which is why she was dubbed La Reina. <laughs> but I, I, had, I, I was very honored and, and that was very sweet, but there has been so many other women before me, like Yolanda Black Navarro, uh, like Lolita Guerrero, who, who all started all of this and, and are just bi pioneer business women uh, who I look up to and respect. So I'll dub them the queen and I'll be just a, a part of their court. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's shoes to fill. Yes. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask a question. I wanted to see what you would let people know um, if they're hesitant about joining a chamber. What would you tell them? I would tell them to, to, to try it. Um, we have this return on investment page and it just gives you the value. It's, a, it's $500 annually for our members, starting out membership levels. If they were to attend a, a lot of our free events, um, the breakfast, uh, the value of that, the uh, listing in our directory, uh, the connections that we make uh, for them to get a new client, all of that would return their, their investment, you know, ear folds, so, so a ton. So it, it's really a great investment for them to do that. And then the other thing is, if they were just to join one of our committees like our 
ambassador committee, which are the PR arm of the chamber, and they get to go out and meet our members by delivering plaques, by delivering certificates, um, delivering gifts, and, and help us, you know, greet people um, on Zoom calls. In the past, we, we had them greet people in person. Um, it's just, it, it really opens up other doors that you never thought you would. So many people come in very timid and shy, uh, uh, um, and then by the time they leave, they've, uh, um, you know, they're now busybodies and they love talking to people and they realize that they had it all in them. They were just, you know, they just didn't have the experience. So we, we have all these opportunities for them to break out of their shell with our business breakfast exchange, uh, just other programming like that. So I would just tell them, give it a try and you will get the return on your investment. Mm -hmm. And and another thing you mentioned, the ambassadors is eventually uh, you can work up to being a board member. And I know that some of the board members have stayed a while. Um, so tell us maybe some of the companies that are on your board and some of the, uh, I think who your current board chair is. Tell us a little bit more about your board. Yeah, we, I'm so very fortunate. Uh, when I came on board, Byron A. Bear with PKF uh, Texas was our board chair and he was the actual, the one that hired me. And um, they're out by the Galleria, but they, they have a lot of partners and a lot of clients here in the East End and in the Port region. Um, so uh, that's one of our, our, our board members today is, is Michael Weltman, who's our treasurer. Um, and, and then our board chair right now is Eloy Cortez with the International Longshoremen's Association. And he knows everybody as well in the port. So it's a great connection. If I don't know, he knows. And so we're a great team together. But we've got um, Sarah Cronin, who is a, a past board chair. She's with TPC Group. We have Todd Stewart, who is a, a former board chair, who is chairman at Inter uh, Gulf Winds International. And then uh, he's the first board chair to follow in his father's footsteps. His father, uh, Steve Stewart, was a board chair uh, of the chamber, and now he is. So uh, we've got board members from uh, Valero, uh, from um, Lyondale Vassell, uh, from some of the smaller companies uh, in the area, including um, Cassell's Auto and Truck, uh, Capriva Auto Body, and, and restaurants uh, all over, like Blanca's Cafe and uh, the new one, Acadian Coast. So we just have members and board members from all over the place. And, and that's what we also pride ourselves. It's interesting, the board members do work with one another uh, um, and to, to, to either apply for grants or to do business with one another. It's just a great, great way to, to do business. Absolutely. And the chamber also has an arm for giving back to the community. Yeah, we uh, created a, an East End Chamber Foundation and so honored that when Trina w was uh, interning with us, she was leading our efforts uh, for a scholarship application process with students that attended an East End high school or lived in the East End. And so we average about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 in scholarships to high school seniors every year. Those seniors are also paired with a mentor, um, either someone that went to a college that they're going to or in a career that they want to pursue. And it's just been a wonderful thing to give back because even still today I'm the first in my family to go to college and we're still meeting students that they're the first in their family to go to college so one day we'll be able to break that cycle here in the East End but it, until then it, it's an honor uh, that a portion of all of our proceeds all the events that we do even a voluntary amount when people renew their membership it goes toward the uh, education foundation so that we can do programming like this and give scholarships yeah that's awesome yeah, I love um, the mentorship program. It's awesome. I was actually messaging with my mentee from a couple of years ago today because there's a program at the University of Houston that I think that she should apply for and um, she's going to apply for it. And she recently got a scholarship from University of Houston as well through one of our other programs. So I think that, um, you know, you have some really great future leaders that are going to come back to the community and give back. Oh, thank you, Trina. You're, you're just such a, a blessing and asset to all these because you really know what to do and find the right people. So I love the way our world is turning around and around. Mm -hmm. Coming coming back, what is your, one of your favorite foundation success stories or scholarship recipient that you have, um, that you have, uh, oh, sorry. What is one of your favorite foundation success stories of um, a scholarship recipient? You know, it's interesting. I was partake, partaking in an event for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, the Go to Hano Committee, and it was a fashion show. And, uh, you know, we just 
walked out there and they they said my name and everything. Um, and someone came up to me afterwards and said, hi, I won a scholarship from the East End Chamber. And it was just amazing. Um, um, the other day during the beginning of, of the pandemic, we were doing a member minute at um, Cox Hardware Store. And we had our masks on and there was this young man that worked there and he was in the aisle and I moved out of the way so he can go past me. And uh, I met, would you like to pass? And he's like, no, um, but I wanted to say, I want a scholar. I heard you say East End Chamber and I want a scholarship from you. And uh, and, I'm, and, and he's a, a senior right now in college working uh, during the summer at Cox Hardware. And it was just, it's just beautiful. Everywhere you turn, you run into these students. Um, we, we reach out to them for them to come back and volunteer and they do. Um, it, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We even helped one student sent me an email and said he wanted to pursue a, a law degree and could I help him with an internship. Sent his resume over to a law firm they hired him for that summer, um, um, and so it, it's just great, uh, the, the success story. And, and, and it's great because they have this drive and passion that we all have, and so I just know that they're in great hands. Oh, that's awesome. So, I also know that you venture out occasionally. You do give back a lot on your own, and you, I have seen you uh, mentor uh, people, but I know you also mentor young women, too. Far, far out. <laughs> <laughs> from the Eastern Circle. Um, so tell us about some of your, how you mentor and give back personally. Yeah, um, you know, I have no human children um, and uh, I, I am, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm 54 years old and, and so I feel like the, the students that I mentor are like adopted or, or distanced children. Um, and I, I won an award from Texas Executive Women called Women on the Move back in 2008. And um, one of my, the ladies there, Margot Snyder, led at a, a mentor group in, at Ball High School in Galveston. So for the past 10 years, I have been helping her with uh, going to Galveston and mentoring these young ladies. It's been a, a, a pleasure because same thing, at the end of the program, they get a scholarship from the efforts of that organization. Oh, and wow. and it's so cute because um, we had a, a program and one of the scholarship recipients from last year spoke and she's interning with the Galveston Chamber of Commerce. And uh, so I'm like, you know, you know, so you, you never know what seeds you can plant into these young people. But but other, or, you know, things that I love to do is just any, I get calls all the time and I, I cannot, I always have to raise my hand or I always say yes. Uh, but even during right now, during this winter storm, uh, there's so many senior citizens that are hurting from busted pipes and lack of food insecurity and transportation. So just, Delivering food to them and water to them is, is, is makes my day. Um, and even my church, uh, um, there's a lot of senior citizens that go there. And so uh, we, we, anything that they need, I've been trying right now to get most of them uh, registered for a vaccine or get a vaccine because I know how important that is for them. Right. Um, so any anywhere I see a cause, um, I, I try to do. My grandmother uh, taught me at a young age that the more you give, it comes back in double. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know what that meant back in the day until it started happening. And I'm like, wow, this good thing happened. Happened and I'm like, it's because of that good deed I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I know also that you attend one of the oldest churches mm -hmm. in the East End. But what are some of the, what else, um, for people who are not familiar with the East End, what would be something that they would need to come and either see or try if you have not been in the East End before? They definitely need to, to go by Our Lady Guadalupe Church on Navigation. It is one of the oldest uh, Catholic church, one of the first ones here in the East End. And then right next to it is Guadalupe Park Plaza. And there's a beautiful fountain there. Um, but they just uh, installed these um, the, these boards, actually these these history plaques of all different families that have that have contributed to the East End. So you've got uh, the Yolanda Black Navarro, uh, her family has a plaque there, the Morales family, all the, the Lorenzo family, um, all these different beautiful families that have contributed to the history of the East End. They have plaques there that you can learn the history of them. So I would highly recommend that, that too. There are tons of murals in the East End. Uh, the East End is a cultural district and uh, they, they there's there's a list of murals on our website. There's there's a list of murals on the East End District's website. Um, you, 
you can do a little mural tour of your own. I went on a bike ride uh, last month on a mural tour and it was fantastic. And then I know that Barrio Dogs is getting ready to do another mural tour as a fundraiser for them. Um, and I definitely want to get on that bike ride. Uh, but th and, and the food, oh my goodness, just come uh, get a, 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 a Airbnb uh, from one of one of our chamber members uh, has a, 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 some Airbnbs here, Russ and Company. Just get a, a rent a room around here or downtown and uh, just come and, and try the food. I mean, the breakfast tacos at, at different places, then followed by, you know, a lunch somewhere and then, you know, the dinner. It, it, we have uh, Thai food, we've got Mexican food, we have barbecue. There's so many new things that are happening right now in the East End. The music, the, the nightlife, uh, it's great. COVID is among us, but there are some socially distanced opportunities. Um, and there's a new place that, that um, um, uh, I like. It's called White Rhino. They've got a huge outdoor patio that's open to dogs and to kids. So um, uh, it's another uh, fun thing to do. And then the parks, the parks in the East End are just beautiful. We've got City Gas Park, we've got Mason Park. Um, it's just, it's you can spend a whole day here and then come and still need to come back another day to, to complete your visit. That sounds really cool. Trina, you were going to talk about the directory? that she's one of our founders cutting this part out. Yes, so Francis, you are actually um, one of our founders and- um, <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not. <laughs> yeah, and so as one of our founders, you will get a button uh, on Ooh. our website that shows that you're a founder. I am and, honored. Uh, yeah, so, well, we're honored that you are one yes. of our- Yes, thank you for being- <laughs> Thank you for being one of our, our founding founder um, for our video networking uh, directory. So um, in this in this you can hear um, pretty much Francis. I mean it's it's a little bit um, it, it's more of a 60 second commercial about what Francis just talked about, but that's what's shareable. Um, but you can also see the five industries that the chamber is looking to connect with. Um, and so you will, you can always visit the directory to see, because that will change based on how just the business environment changes. But as of right now, um, the five that are listed are construction, healthcare providers, auto care, auto and car dealership, manufacturing and energy. So Francis, do you want to talk a little bit more about these five industries and why the chamber is looking to connect with these industries right now? Those industries are some of the top industries in the city of Houston. And uh, we just want to make sure that we have, we, our board members reflect the culture of the city. It's very diverse. And we just want to make sure that our membership is also that diverse and reflects the city of Houston. And so that's why those are some of the, the target uh, categories that we want to pursue this year. Okay. So if you're watching this and you know uh, you're either in the industry or know someone in the industry that should be part of the East End Chamber, um, Francis' information is included below. I was just going to say, if um, our viewers can let us know in the comments if they've ever been a member of a chamber or participated in a chamber event. We wanna know which chamber of commerce you participated in and what that event was and how you liked it. Yeah. Um, and, and I do know that many organizations are part of multiple chambers for different reasons, um, different areas, but speaking of chambers, it's a whole, there's a whole industry of chambers. And I know that you have been a part of led by Gulf Coast chambers. Um, there's a Texas chambers uh, of commerce organization. So within an industry speaking, what would be some words of encouragement or advice to give to other chamber members, uh, other chamber leaders? Uh, my advice to other chamber leaders is to really you know, keep the passion that you have. Um, try to always reinvent yourself, especially after five years, because everything is changing now. Um, the digital world is changing. The way that, that we get our revenue is changing. So right now during COVID and during this winter storm, we're all having to pivot to, to transfer our funds from events to other things. So we've got to just reinvent ourselves all the time. And, and maybe this is a, a good thing that's going to come out of, of this uh, COVID-19 is we're going to find other sources of income that will sustain us in case this ever happens again. 
and and just be be, be open to, to new ideas and to listen to some of the younger folks that are coming in. You know, we, we've got to uh, talk to them about the importance of joining the Chamber of Commerce because, you know, they don't know what that was. Um, and then we can learn from each other. Um, um, and then also, I highly recommend them to get involved with either the Gulf Coast Chamber of Commerce executives or the, the Texas Chamber of Commerce executives. The, the TCCE is having their conference uh, in Ju June this year, and it's just always a wonderful thing. I, you know, you we go to these conferences and you meet people from all over Texas that are in chambers and it's like, wow, you get to pick ideas or pick their brain, share ideas, and then come back with all of these energized ideas that you want to uh, uh, fulfill and start. That was great. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you, Francis, very much. And Francis will be back with... Um, <laughs> either more tips or maybe hearing from some of the East End Chamber members, but Francis is going to be back. Yeah. And then I wanted to also to tell people that, that you know, even during this COVID, um, new businesses are opening. So if you have a desire, just take that fear away because as I say, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. A good number of, of companies opened during this COVID experience. Some of them did close, uh, yeah. but the, the, this is the time when people you know, uh, can go out there and, and start something new and, and don't be afraid to ask for advice because that's a lot of times what we're finding out is some of our members you know, don't have a marketing plan, they don't have a business plan, or they haven't updated it in a while and they're just too busy to ask for help. And so that's what we're here to do is point them in the right direction so that they can continue to succeed and, uh, and then grow and get more employees, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that is definitely very sound advice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Francis. And we look forward to having you on the show again. I know. I, I, I look forward to talking with you ladies all the time. <laughs> yes, well, we're going to have to, uh, we'll have to get an in-person interview next time, and then we'll have to see. Maybe it's just at the end of Lent, and you can tell us about how you manage through Lent. <laughs> I know, yeah. for those who don't and know. I, I propose having it at uh, White Rhino. I yeah. love it. After Lent, because I did give up alcohol for Lent and I can't wait for Easter so I can um, slowly get back into it. But yeah, I love that idea because Trina, I'll bring my dog Joy. Um, oh, yes. yes. It sounds good. And, and you can bring your dog too, Jenny. Yeah, I can bring Bella. That's, that sounds like a date. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Bye ladies. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time. That's all, y'all.